Okay, take four. I recently hit Challenger. I wanted to clickbait a video and I was asking myself what video would I like to clickbait slash teach, okay? And recently, a student of mine had good mechanics, but he had no income. So he couldn't kill anyone because he had no money, right? He couldn't carry. Even though he could hit everything, he literally did not have the money in order to kill people or do enough damage, right? So the problem that a lot of you guys have, probably like masters and below, or even GM and below, is that you do not know how to consistently generate income. And the most obvious form of income is 10 CS a minute. Okay, that's like the kind of golden standard for solo queue. Okay, so the question is, how do you get 10 CS a minute? And I'm going to teach you that here today. And I'm not going to lie, it's not going to be easy. I'm going to try and make this as short and concise as possible. Okay, hopefully it'll be under 20 minutes. But at the end of the video, I promise you, you will literally have a step-by-step -step process on how to get 10 CS a minute every single game. Okay, it doesn't matter what's happening in the game, you will be able to make income every single game okay and i'm just gonna throw it out on here this is my <laughs> this is my script okay um so there if you're not familiar with how i teach uh the way i kind of have my students implement knowledge into gameplay um is to form new habits we have a we have a system for forming new habits okay so if you can create these habits in your gameplay you will be able to get 10 CS a minute every game. But the problem is that it's not easy, okay? We're gonna go through this. You know, I, I thought a lot about this, and um, this is kind of the best I could come up with in the last you know few hours. This is the structure, okay? This is the structure, okay? So let me explain how we make a habit, and then we're gonna talk about the three main habits for getting 10 CS a minute, okay? So the way we make a habit is by at adding something new we want to add to our gameplay, and attaching it to something we already do in game while autopiloting. When by autopiloting, I mean you're not thinking and you do it anyways. So for many people who play the game, an autopilot action can be like CSing. So if you wanted to add a new habit to your CSing habit currently, you could say every time you want to last hit a minion, insert this new habit. Okay. So let's say you get hit by blitz crank hook when you go for cannon. Then the next time you say, every time I go for cannon or every time I go for a minion, look at blitz crank. So you know when he's going to hook you. Right. And by doing that, literally every time you go for a minion, you will look at their support. So you won't be caught off guard by their engage. Right. And that is the kind of long term habit we want to implement so that your autopilot becomes better, right? The game is not really about actively thinking 200 things at the same time. It's about not thinking anything and shitting on them anyways, okay? So the three main habits I want to um, kind of have you guys learn today, and there are a lot of habits that we're gonna talk about after you can do the three main habits, is you wanna make a habit every time a wave is coming in, you need to look at the map. Every time you push a wave, you need to look at the map. And every time a fight breaks out, you need to look at the map, okay? This third one is the one that gets most of you people. Most of you people are like, I can't get 10 CS a minute because my team is fighting. Oh my God, if I go farm bot, they're gonna ARM mid. I don't, I don't know what to do. We're gonna lose 4v5. Yo, shut the fuck up, okay? You probably don't know what you're doing. And we're going to dive deep into what you're supposed to be doing as ADC. You feel like, oh my God, the, the, the fucking, everything is falling apart and you just, you just can't do anything because your team decides to 4v5, okay? Like, I'll show you the correct timing to go farm okay so without further ado i have three games for you and we are going to fast forward past the laning if you want a laning 10 cs a minute it will have to be another video okay you're gonna have to like you know fucking like the video or something post comments to let me know that you want a laning version okay but most people need an out of lane version a lot of people can do like eight nine ten cs a minute in lane they cannot get 10 cs a minute out of lane okay so remember these three things every time a wave is coming in we're gonna look at the map we're gonna pause and look at the map. Every time you push, we're gonna pause and look at the map. Every time a fight breaks out, we're gonna pause and look at the map. So for each clip, each time, if the whole, we're gonna watch examples, okay? We're gonna pause, and I want you to do these habits with me. And by repetition, we will be able to create these habits in game, okay? So for the first one, we're gonna do these three main habits, okay? So 
let's watch. This is at the end of the laning phase when I take the outer tower bot, right? And um, I want you to practice this with me, okay? When we pause the video, I want you to ask yourself, do you, you want me to practice these habits, okay? Every time the wave is coming in, like it is right now, we ask yourself, can we get the wave, right? Based off of, you know, are they, are they going to be able to gank us or whatever, right? So in this case, you guys have incomplete information, but I'll tell you guys that we can get it and we can just net away. There's there's no there's no issues here. We can just walk away if someone tries to gank us, right? So step one is pushing the wave like this, okay? Now, this is where your next habit comes in. Every time you push and or clear a wave, you ask yourself, you look at the map and you say, what do I want to do with this timing? And what do I mean by timing? Every time you push a wave, you gain time to go do something else before you need to go get the next wave. This is what this is, if people describe, if you have heard people describe league in turns, like it's turn-based, this is what a turn is. You have pushed the, the, the wave so that you get a turn. You get a turn because you don't have to you don't have to go get your income anymore. You've already gotten it. Okay. So what do you want to do with your timing? What do you want to do with your turn? So in this case, I want you guys to ask yourself this question. Um, so if you don't know what you should do with your turn, uh, I'll give you some examples. Like we can go ward, we can go roam, we can go, you know, halfway shift to a different lane. We can base, um, we can keep pushing. We can hit the tower without turn, right? So in this case, if you guys say, I want to base with my turn, you would be correct. Because there's nothing to do bot side. The only other thing to do would be use our turn to take Krugs. But that seems a little bit sus because they're, you know, it's not very safe, right? So you will use our turn to base. And by basing in between turns, you will be able to not lose random waves. So for example, if you base when you don't have a turn, if you base without first clearing or pushing a wave, you will lose that wave. You will lose seven, six CS. Okay, so in this example, we have 10 CS a minute coming out of lane, all right? Like I said, if you want to do like a lane 10 CS a minute, we can we can discuss that, you know, just let me know in the comments or whatever, like, comment, subscribe, XD. But what we're going to focus on is out of lane, okay? So now we are back to every time a wave is coming in. Look at the map. Did we clear mid? Obviously, we clear mid, okay? So we're going to watch me clear mid. And I'm going to want to, you know, we're going to do the same thing. It's literally the same thing over and over again, right? We clear mid. Right? And then we say, what do I want to do with this timing? So I want you to take a look at the map and be like, okay, what do we do with this timing? What is happening? Okay, there, Riven is ganking top. Riven is the jungler, right? So what do we want to do this timing? We're shifting top side in case something happens. So we can go help, right? We're helping clear vision top side, helping defend vision top side. We're playing around the Rift Herald, right? Other things you could do with your timing is be like, you know, screw it. Let's go steal chickens. Let's go let's go get Scuttle. Or you can catch the mid, the mid wave high, right? Just some examples, some ideas to throw out there. Not everything you see here is gonna be perfect, right? These are just ideas of what you can do, right? But as you can see, a new wave is coming in. We didn't have much time to go do something because we had, we had to clear the wave. We didn't even get to push it. Right? So if you look here, a wave is coming in. You ask yourself, you know, do, can I push this? Right? This is the, this is the same. Happen number one. Wave is coming in. Can I push this? The answer is yes. Of course. Go push. Go push. We need to go push. Right? You see if I'm happening top? No. You need to push. How do we know you need to push? Because you can't really do anything if you go top side. Right? The only thing you can offer, well, let's go. Let's go. Let's actually talk about this. So the third habit we haven't shown yet is. Every time a fight breaks out, which is what's happening topside, Riven is ganking Wukong with Teemo, okay? So every time a fight breaks out, you need to look at the map and see if you can help. Can your champion help? And help does not mean auto attack them. Help means I have a specific play here that would change the outcome of this fight. So let's come up with some ideas. With Caitlyn, how do we help this topside fight? I have ulti, that's it. You're not going to be able to... How, do you, how are you going to net them or queue them or trap them or gale force them? You're not going to get close enough, right? It's, gonna, it's way too far. You show up and you only have ulti, right? Ash, for example, you show up and you're going to press R. Varus has ulti. Well, some more meta champions like Kai'Sa. You're going to ulti in and ISO queue and W proc passive. That's why Kai'Sa's mid game is so great is that you, you have options when fights break out, right? But for most money-making champions that aren't kind of early game focused, we need... You, you can't really force help you can't help okay so in this case it's very clear that there's not much to go do if you go top right so that means what do you do while that fight is happening 
you have a timing to go do something, which is push mid. While something is happening, you take a look. Can I help this? And if you can't, we default push, right? So that's why we are pushing mid, okay? And this is the part that gets most of you guys. So a lot of you guys are like, holy shit, Wukong's in between two towers. I need to go, bro. I need to go. We did this a fight happening. No, dude, you do not need to go. You need, what you need to do is make money, okay? So we need to push mid here. And you'll notice that, like we thought, there's us going top would have changed nothing. Wukong's already dead, right? And we got the mid wave. Right? A lot of you guys would waste a shit ton of time going topside, and then you look mid and Maokai is taking the wave. You're like, bro, my support's taking my wave. You guys, you guys just fucking, you just don't know what you're talking about, right? So, this is very important. This specific example, I want you guys to remember, okay? So, now, back to our second habit. After we push the wave, you look at the map and you say, what do I do with this timing? So, we just will killed Wukong, right? And the most obvious thing to do is play towards whatever side of the map you think we can get something done, which is Rift Tower, right? Or because, you know, Riven's on that side of the map and Teemo's on that side of the map, right? What side of the map can we get stuff done? What do you want to do with your timing? You want to be, you want to be useful, right? You don't want to just AFK at the tower unless you have nothing better to do. So here, someone's pinging Rift Herald. So we're like, okay, we're going to come help the Rift Herald. And we can come help this, not necessarily for free, but we're not losing minions. That's the important part. We have already cleared mid. So now we have a turn to go do something. So this whole fighting stuff, this is kind of like irrelevant. You guys can all do this. Like, you guys don't really need help. Well, maybe some of you, but most of you guys don't need help with like just random fighting and stuff. You guys do that enough. Of, <laughs> you guys do a lot of random fighting on your own, right? But here's the thing. After you are done with whatever you have chosen to do with your timing, once that turn is over, I want to help the Rift Herald. It's over. Now you have to look at the map. Another wave is incoming. You, know, you, you see this habit kicking in? It's every 30 seconds. You're going to have to look at the map and see what you want to do. You know, how do you, how do you get this wave? <laughs> Every 30 seconds, you're going to have to ask yourself, how do I get this wave incoming mid? So, of course, we're going to walk back mid, right? So, you know, you just, you just go back mid. And it's, it's literally the same goddamn thing, okay? We're going to get the wave mid. And then you ask yourself, what do I do with this timing? Right? So you're going to watch me clear this mid very safely, right? We'll talk about, um, maybe we'll get to ideas of how you know if you can push or not. But uh, that might be out of the scope of this video. But after we push the wave mid... We ask yourself, what do we do with this timing? It's super obvious here, okay? You you pause, look at the map. What do I do with this timing until the next wave comes in? And if you answered, help with the dragon control, you are correct, right? It's probably the only thing you can do here. Yeah, I definitely don't want to base, right? So here, you, you we can watch this, but this is all pretty... I mean, you guys can do all this, right? This is all pretty standard, right? We see Teemo on the way. This, this is pretty much whatever, okay? Um, we're just like fighting or something. <laughs> we're just helping this fight, okay? This is This is... I was hoping this fight is just like, you guys can all do this, okay? So, once this fight is over, um, I'm almost right there. Once this fight is over, we pause. This is a habit we haven't talked about yet. Um, well, actually, it is kind of what we talked about, but this is kind of more specific, okay? We said every time your turn is over, every time you have done your timing thing, you look at the map again, and you decide, what do I want to do? What do, I, do I need to fix any waves here? Right. Um, so in this case, we can add a better habit. Every time a fight is over, look at the map and see if we need to fix waves. Do I need to fix mid? Yes. Can I fix mid with 10 HP? No. What do you think you should do with this timing when you go home? Right. So you will see me go home right now because there's literally nothing better to do. And here's the thing. You guys are like, wait a minute. Why are you not helping with the dragon? Right. Why are we not helping with the dragon? Because... They do not need us to take the dragon. Imagine if you use your time to take the dragon when they don't need your time, you're just screwing yourself over to on, on farming. You're not going to get the next wave because you're going to be late to the wave, right? You're not going to be able to get the push, right? So this game is all about time management, right? As Especially as a carry role, you need to use your time very wisely, right? Because if we had based late, and if we had based eight seconds late, we would be late to the mid wave, right? Although Timo's already running to the mid wave, but you you get the point, right? We're late on the map for no reason, other than the fact other than the fact that we we wanted to kill the dragon faster or something. I don't know, right? So, anyways, um, coming out of base, we go mid, right? Timo has just pushed, right? So, what do we do with this timing? We want to pause here. We say, what do we do with this timing? We didn't push, but our teammate pushed the wave, so there's a timing, right? To go do something. So, you want to take a look at the map here. And you ask yourself, what do you want to do with this timing? Okay, so 
And I'll give you like, you can take as much time as you want, but I'm just going to give you the answer. We're going to take camps here because there's nothing better to do. You're going to see me go farm something for sure, right? And I haven't really watched, it's funny, I haven't really watched this video since I played the game. It's just that these habits determine how you play. And, you know, I'm, I mean, I'm, you, you, the way you play is going to be the same every game, right? Because of your autopilot. So me sitting down and discussing this stuff with you guys is, is just the same as me playing the game and just automatically, oh, we do this, we do this, we do that, we do that, right? So it's very logical, right? So yeah, with our timing, with Timo's timing, we're going to go and take chickens, right? And you'll notice that after, remember, remember, it's the same thing. You chose to do the chickens. So after you do the chickens, you need to go back and fix the wave, right? Um, here we took a we took a little plant here um, before going to fix the wave, but you're starting to see the point, right? This this is a step that a lot of you guys make a mistake on. You will push the first wave, use your timing to go like clear wards, and not go back mid to clear the the next wave or push the next wave, right? No, no, no. It's you know every thirty seconds we need to do the same thing. We need to clear the wave, and then <laughs> it's the same thing. Pause. What do we do with our timing? And sometimes if you think you have nothing to do with your timing, you can just AFK, right? That's that's actually, you know, sometimes the correct answer. We just chill and wait for our team, right? So in this case, it's definitely a chill angle. Or you could try and do wolves, but I think Riven is doing wolves. Wow, did I say Viego earlier? I meant uh, Riven was our jungler, so I'm losing my mind. Anyways, um, so we look at the wave that's incoming. We need to push mid, right? Uh, for you advanced, more advanced uh, viewers out there who like already know all this stuff, probably like Masters GM stuff, I'll throw in another habit for you guys. Um, how do we know if it's safe to get the mid wave, right? So this is something I want to give a shout out to Jake Prismo. Um, this is something that I haven't, I didn't really notice until he pointed it out to me a few years ago. Your ability to get the wave is dependent on their attack. Can the enemy threaten you when you get this wave? And the way they just threaten at you, where they sprint at you, is determined by what the enemy is doing with their timings. So, what do we mean by that? What are they doing with their timings? You look at the solo lanes, what are the solos doing with their timing? So, Akali needs to pick up the wave. Jinx is sharing for some reason. Wukong, the other solo there, needs to pick up his wave. Right? Therefore, these people are farming with this timing because you see them in the lane and they haven't pushed out yet, right? And you see what, what's going on in the waves. So now you know it's only jungle and support, right? And then you take a look at the jungle and support and you say, this is the next habit, by the way. You take a look at the jungle and support and you say, what is their specific play? So if we give you an example of Elise and Blitzcrank, they have two plays. They're going to cocoon your ass and they're going to hook your ass, Right? So therefore, you need to be on the lookout for a Blitz and a Lease Hook and Cocoon from these angles that is not warded. Maybe even some psycho shit like Flash of the Wand Hook. That's not going to happen, but you know what I mean, right? And then let's say if it's like something super, um, uh, let's say it's like Kane and like a Lulu, okay? Then what is their one play? Lulu speeds up Kane, goes to the wall, and he's going to W you. So you play towards this side and you prepare to net when you see Kane, right? So that is how you get the wave safely every single time. That's how you can calculate it, okay? It's not like we, you know, kind of, I feel like I can push this, I feel like I can't push this, no. We can actually math it out that, so we can know that you you literally can or cannot do it, right? Based off the enemy's plays. So anyways, um, yeah, sorry. If, there, if that was just too much for you guys, just ignore that, okay? But definitely helpful to know. Um, <laughs> after you can do all this other stuff first, right? So after we push the wave, we need to ask ourselves, what do you want to do with this timing? Okay, the same goddamn thing over and over again. So pause here. Tell me, what do you want to do with your timing? Right? We haven't really discussed. It's, this video is not really focused on optimal things to do on your timing. It's just really how to get all the CS so you can have a timing. But anyways, um, if you're when in doubt, you just go make income or help your team. So in this case, um, if you see it, we're invading red, right? Because it's spawning, right? We're hella invading red, helping our Maokai clear all this, put down saplings, and we're going to fight for this, right? We're going to use our timing while Jinx is clearing the wave to fight for the... Um, to fight for uh, these camps, right? So you see me, we're just, you know, we're just playing, you guys can do all this. I'm not, I'm not really concerned about your PVP. Uh, well, some of you guys, I should be concerned about your PVP, but um, most of you guys are fine, okay? So we did the red. Now, stop, because we just used our timing to go invade. Now, back to the same thing. Wave is coming in. I need to push. Which 
Waves, do you need a fix? Mid and bot. So which one do you choose? Well, usually default mid, right? So we default mid here, right? Because uh, team wants to use Rift Herald. So I'm going to default mid here. And uh, we're just going to plot that. We're going to plot that bad boy down, right? Me and Viego are just pushing this. And um, you could opt to go bot, right? I'm not saying, we're not saying this. these examples are perfect. We're just giving you the habits you need in order to make your own decision, right? If you said they are going to Rift Hero mid by themselves and they don't need you, like at the Dragon, they didn't need you. You can, in fact, go bot and make even more money, right? You literally can go bot here. Like going bot here would not be a bad idea, right? So it just depends on what you guys think you can get. So here we think, you know, instead of going bot, we can break base, which we can, right? But if you're like, yo, fuck breaking base, I'm going to go farm bot. You can do that. Right. So here, um, we use our timing, you know, to use our Rift Tower mid, right? And we're trying to get the inhib. Uh, not sure if this will be successful, but it might. Nah, it's not successful, right? It's fine. You didn't have to get it, right? So um, after we do something, right? When you look at the map and we say, what's the plan? What are we doing now? Do we need to get a wave mid? No, not yet. So we have time to do something. Probably could be chickens, could be base. Apparently I chose base here. Um, chickens would not be the worst idea, right? Uh, but, uh, yeah, we definitely need to sprint mid guys, right? And you go catch the wave, right? So let's fast forward a little bit because here's just me running towards the wave. Um, uh, caught the wave and you'll notice that I'm still 10 seconds a minute, right? And if I had chosen to go bot instead of helping mid push into the ba the break, the base, break base, we would have more than 10 seconds a minute. Okay. So here, same thing. Wave is coming in. Can I push? I look at the side lanes and we say, uh, Akali's using, she needs to pick up the wave and, t and Wukong's using, you know, he's fighting for the top prowl. So it's just jungle and support, right? From the top side. Sorry about that. Uh, we know the jungle is Olaf, right? So we say, you know, Olaf's just going to run at you. What do you do? You net away, right? Gale force away, whatever, right? After you push the wave, you ask yourself, what do I do with this timing? And if you want to get red, you want to do chickens, do whatever you want, right? So here we do red, okay? Uh, the support is Lulu, right? So their one play is Lulu speeds up Olaf and he runs axes at you, right? So you guys should know how to deal with that. You save net, you save Gale Forest. Um, should be pretty simple, right? You just net him when he shows up, right? Um, so, yep, we, after we used our timing to get the red, what do we do? Go back mid, right? Go pick up the next wave, right? Again, we same thing, right? We look at the sides. Nothing's really changed. It's just Olaf and Lulu sprinting at you still, right? Push the wave and you say, what do I want to do with the next timing? Probably invade topside or get scuttle. Oh, we saw Olaf, so definitely invade, we definitely get the scuttle, right? So we're going to go get the scuttle, right? Just It's just all about making money. Like if you don't know what to do with your timing, so you should just default to making money and, and you will learn some um, good examples, some good uh, situations, right? So after you do the scuttle, same, same thing, dude. It's, it's really the same thing. After you use your turn, you know, you have to go and farm the next wave, right? We go by here. Right, we can. I mean, you can blue chain that if you want to, but there's really no need, right? Uh, it's just a Kali, I think, right? So we just hit this, right? And we say, What do you do when a Kali shows up, right? And we just say, You know, we just trap ourselves and Gale first away, whatever. You come up with whatever plan you need, right? You see me putting traps down, right? We get the wave, and you say, What do you do with this timing, right? It's, I swear to God, it's the same thing. And uh, oh, they're sprinting at you, so you've baited them, and now your team is using this Akali and Olaf's timing. They've already shown their cards to gank mid. They're forcing mid, right? So you've done a great job in split pushing, right? And then what do you do? You go mid here, right? Use our timing to go back mid, sure. There's some fight breaking out, which we're going to win because it's 4v3, right? Because Olaf showed bot. And then waves coming in. We push the wave, right? What do you want to do after you push? Well, scuttle? I mean, uh, chicken seems pretty good, right? We can even shift top side if we really think we have an ulti here. Right, but you see, like in the mid game, the mini there's a mini objective every 30 seconds, and it's the waves. There's a mini objective every 30 seconds. Okay, I want you to think you need to figure out how to pick up every single wave when possible. And I literally have more than TS a minute. And if I we did, couldn't get the Baron, I would steal their chickens. Right, so it'd be even more than 11 CS a minute. That's how this, this is how like Uzi and people get like 12 CS a minute. You know, you remember those frogging like it's like 15 CS a minute or something. This is how these guys do it. They use their timing to perma make money, okay? So here, we use the timing to do Baron because their whole team died, right? But after you do the Baron, you need to pack, pick up mid, right? So uh, team was picking up mid, right? And uh, we, we end up not basing because we want to do the, uh, the, the dragon, right? So new wave, push mid, 
What do you do with the timing? Do dragon. After you do dragon, you look mid, right? It's the same thing. It's really the same thing, okay? It's just how can you structure your gameplay into turns like this, into timings. I like to call it timings. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe something's wrong with me, but um, I like to call it timings, right? So after you do the dragon, what do you want to do? You can go bot, right? Um, you can choose. I think here we chose the base here because um, we... Uh, oh, yeah. I think we wanted a base here because we wanted to match timing with Diego. But uh, honestly, you should just push bot. I mean, just be greedy. Just be a greedy AF, okay? Um, I think there's pros and cons to uh, not pushing. But um, when, I mean, if, when in doubt, just just push it, okay? I think it would be totally fine if I just push bot and insta base and then we go top all the way, right? That seems pretty reasonable to me. So now, coming out of base, you look at the map. Can I, you know, can I go get the next wave, which is bot, right? The answer is yes, we run bot, right? But here's the thing. This is the second time a fight has broken out that has required our attention. I remember what he said about fights breaking out. Every time a fight breaks out, you need to look to see if you can help. And you're going to help with a very specific play in mind. Okay? So, in this case, there's only one way for you to help on Kaelin. I want you to tell me what it is right now. And if you said it's Kaelin ulti, you'd be right. So, do you think your Kaelin ulti would do anything in this fight? The answer is yes. Because they have no front. I mean, anything I hit with ulti is pretty strong. Like, I have, I have Lord Doms, right? Ulti is a, a, actually a play. So, we can sprint mid here and just press R on someone. Right? So, yes. We will use, instead of pushing that wave bot... We can, in fact, help because we can do something, right? If you are just literally no ulti Caitlyn and you're walking this way, that doesn't make any sense. We need to be use that time to push bot. And then we can go look to help, right? So yeah, we can force our ulti onto someone's face here. Being able to help on these off timings where you haven't gone the wave yet, you need to be able to force it on their face, which is what we just did, right? So after fight is over, we look at the map and we say, okay, what do you want to do? Honestly, it seems, I mean, our team could probably get the in hit without us, right? You, <laughs> you could, in fact, do the cycle move and like push side lanes, but I think we're ending the game here. So um, we just we just sprint mid, right? But uh, if you guys were not going to end the game here, you could sprint bot, right? That would be even better. So here, I mean, this is the end of the game. So we, we this is whatever, right? But you can see that we have more than 10 CS a minute. And we have identified at least three or four more extra sources of income we could have picked up. Like three waves in a camp, right? So this is kind of the strategy you can use to maximize your income in the mid-game, okay? Like repetition, I cannot repeat this enough, okay? The first habit is every time the wave a new wave is coming in, you need to look at the map and see if you can get it, okay? And if you want to be advanced about it, right? You need to see if they can force on you when you're getting it, when you're pushing it. So you know, look at the side lane prowl and see what specific play they have with their members that have a timing. And then you make sure that you can beat that. And if you can't beat that, you let it push in and you clear the wave, right? And then the second habit is every time you push the wave, take a look at the map to see what you want to do with your timing. And last but not least, after you're done with that timing, your turn, you need to go back and get the next wave. Okay, so these are the cookie cutter steps in order to make sure you're generating maximum amount of income. Okay, I hope this helped. Um, I know it's a little bit longer than I wanted it to be, so I'm going to cut it. But if you want to see a laning version of this, let me know in the comments. You know, it should be free, free, should be free clickbait. You know what I mean? 10 seasons a minute and lane keg W. But uh, yeah, thanks for watching. Um, hopefully you learned something. If you didn't, let me know uh any comment section below if like if we're fucking if we have some fucking gm and master players in here that already know all this maybe we will try and make something more advanced okay so yeah for the rest of you guys thank you for watching you better get 10 seconds a minute after watching this video and if you can't go back and rewatch the video to see the step-by-step -step process in which we can insert these habits so that you can notice when you can make 10 seconds a minute okay notice when you can catch the wave push the wave, create timings, and after your timings, go back to catching the wave and pushing the wave, okay? So yeah, thanks for watching. I will see you guys next time. Um, toodles. Bye-bye.